Today is day 110, and we're reading from several passages from the book of Psalms. Today's readings point us in the model of David, who passionately pursued after God, who abandoned all of the natural inclinations and instincts to fully cry out to God and to wait upon God's direction. It has been said, God helps those who help themselves. But the Bible tells us here that that is absolutely incorrect, that indeed God helps those who seek him. And when we look to God and move based upon his direction, we then are able to say with David, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord. David knew this firsthand and he experienced it again and again. He said, Behold, he who keeps Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord preserves from evil. There are times that we feel as though God is sleeping and that heaven is silent. But David is reaffirming in a testimony of the faithfulness of God. If it had not been for the Lord, he says, then the enemies would have swallowed us. We would have been devoured. You see, David recognized the fact that there were intense moments of which the enemy was coming around him, of which Saul was trying to destroy him. But he testifies again and again of the faithfulness of God. We need this in our lives. We need to testify of God's faithfulness in our lives. Looking back at the times that we recognize that it had it not been for the intervention of God, we too would have surely fallen. And we need to also declare our absolute dependence upon God, that there is nothing else, no one else, that can support us, that with which we can turn to. The contrast is readily seen between King Saul and David, for we see Saul who was impatient and he was constantly doing his own thing, disregarding the timetable of God. And yet we see David waiting upon God, crying out to God. Their decisions determined their destiny. And what a contrast there is between the two of them. David affirms that all who fear God and walk in his ways will indeed be blessed. Do you believe that? I know I do. Although he acknowledges that, that there have been times he was often afflicted from his youth, in fact, he said. But he also affirms the enemy has not prevailed. He says, out of the depths, I have cried to the Lord. Deep calls to deep. That is that part of desperation down in your soul where you with such fervency crawl upon God and trust in God, not giving up but waiting. And this seems to be the testimony of David. He reminds us of God's amazing mercy. How many of you can identify with this? If the Lord should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you. All of us understand that if we were to number our sins, our shortcomings, our failures when we've missed the mark, then all of us would be disqualified. But David hinges not on this as a license or as an excuse for future disobedience, but rather recognizing for the mercy of God that's been extended to all of us and that in his forgiveness there is freedom. David says, I will wait for the Lord. My soul waits for God. Now, I'll tell you something. Waiting is a difficult thing, isn't it? And yet there are other passages that ring true to this. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And it is in the context of this that David demonstrates again and again why he's a man after God's own heart and why he has so many victories in his life. Boy, did David practice this. He could have taken Paul's life, or I mean Saul's life again and again. It, it, there are opportunities there of which he could have snuffed Saul's life out. He could have justified such a move for Saul to become wicked. He had abandoned the Lord. The prophet had uh, suggested that the Spirit of God had lifted from him. The evil spirit had come upon him. He was acting, acting reckless and all of this, but it would have been premature. And David demonstrates that when you get ahead of, or Saul demonstrates that when you get ahead of God's timetable, you'll reap the consequences. But David here 
demonstrates that you wait upon God and you will reap the reward of God. This is where faith is developed in the valley of waiting, in this, in this spot in which adversity comes when we are prone to jump ahead, when si heaven seems silent. It's, it's where dependence on God is surrendered and it's where uh, the flesh dies and the spirit begins to learn what it means to walk with him. In the end, God gets the credit and God gets the glory. And this becomes the remarkable testimony. And this is why the book of Psalms is so powerful, because it's a backdrop to our own life. And we can quickly relate to the battles and the struggles and the agony of our life as we walk with God. And that becomes a source of strength.